How you doing? This is Oz Fox from Striper and Bloodgood, and you're listening to Stand in the Light. We don't live by bread alone, but by every word you say. Lost and found, that lovely sound is showing us the way. All right, the next episode, I'm just, I got a question. Anybody got their lunchbox out there? And what do you got inside that lunchbox? You got a big sandwich in there? You know, is that what you're going to have for lunch today? Well, let me tell you what, you do not live by bread alone, according to what Jesus said when Satan tempted him. Recorded really early on with working with Oz. Uh, the very first thing we did was Father, Father, and then Bread Alone, Les and Oz got together and came up with that. So, but you do, what you do is you do live um, uh, out of, uh, oh my gosh, have a nice day. Oh, Bread Alone, they mean the fastest song that Bloody has ever played. With the, did mom put a pickle in there for me? <laughs> do you guys have a Beatle lunchbox? I'm not sure. A lot of work to do that song, a lot of, you know, uh, 16th notes just going, it's just, it's in your face. We love the message, and uh, it was just a really fun song to record. Now this episode's really, really, I hope you guys are hungry. And as a matter of fact, I think what you ought to do, first of all, is go ahead and, you know, go to the refrigerator, open it up. I want you to make yourself a sandwich. I want you to look in there. I want you to pick out any cheese you want in there. There's several kinds, but I would caution you, please, leave my probe alone. I listen to that. I'll tell you what, producer-wise, I didn't know how we were going to do this song collage, you know, and I think Kevin and I spent some time trying to just work out the rhythms because it really, it's like watching a, a show and changing the channels three times. That was, a, that was a little bit of a chore. Yeah, that one took some work. You know, it does a half-time grind, it does a double-time, it does a gallop, and I'm just like, couldn't they just throw three songs? Well, I'm going to say, first of all, I was very skeptical going into the studio because I'm a bit of a perfectionist. I just kept saying, guys, we're not ready yet. Oz's striper background in the vocals, I mean, to me, I was hooked with the pre-chorus. I just thought that was really cool. A lot of the songs were, were nowhere complete, and I was like, we need more time. They were mostly complete, but it seems like when we started to slam them out in the studio, they just kind of did come together. I love the concept of Bread Alone. Really cool, but man, I mean, what a switch gears collage fest on the rhythm section. Bread Alone, another composition with Les in Oz. It's basically the only real speed metal song we have on this record. Even when we were halfway through recording it, I didn't think it was going to make it. You know, until it finally was done, pieced together, all the vocals came on, and then again, it, you know, that song's grown on me a ton too. It's kind of like you always perform better when you have to than if you're just supposed to, or you should. But if you have to do it, you got to do it. We don't hear there was only one or two songs that I was thinking, Ugh, we're going to get it done, and it's just not going to, it's not going to be what the vision was. But it was, it was pretty great when it got done. Very hooky, very Oz. You know, Oz is all over the place. He did a great solo on that. I just love that whole grindy, loose, reckless approach he takes. He's, he's a pro. Anyway, what you do live at is every word out of the mouth of God. And this one's called Bread Alone. Now, here's your host, Paul Doty, with Michael Bloodgood.
Hi, this is Paul Doty. You are listening to Stand in the Light, the Bloodgood Dangerously Close podcast. Sitting down with Michael Bloodgood. How are you doing this week, Mike? I'm doing great, Paul. I'm really glad to be back here in this Stand in the Light podcast. We've been having a blast. The next song that we're looking at is Bread Alone. The first time I heard this song, in context to the entire album. It, it's one of the standout songs on uh-huh. the album because of how different it is. The very first thing that went through my mind is, oh, tip of the hat to Detonation. Yeah, it's the only speed metal double kick, if you will, uh, song that we have on the record. I remember we were on tour in, I th- think it was the Chicago area. There was a guy that was talking to you either before or after the show, and I think you were doing an interview, and one of the the things that they said is, you know, wow, this album just doesn't sound anything like Detonation, and you didn't miss a heartbeat. You just came right back with, you know, let me make it perfectly clear, we had no intentions of going in and making Detonation 2. We've already done that. (laughs) Yes, right. So I think it's great that you have this one song on the album that is a tip of the hat to that era, yet it fits right in with all of these modern rock songs. A lot of tempo changes. Again, very different song, really, you know, as the song progresses into it than what we've done before. Again, this is another song that Oz and Les wrote. Uh, Oz writing, you know, the guitar hooks and all that. And it was, yeah, when we were listening to the demo version, we were going, wow, this is going to be a lot of fun. Mm -hmm. (laughs) Mark Welling, just an awesome drummer and awesome time with Blood Good. And through that whole detonation era, one of the best drummers I've ever worked with as a sound engineer uh, in, in this industry. And I just love this song because it's kind of Kevin saying, yeah, I can do the detonation stuff too. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. You know. It's ironic that Kevin replaced Mark twice in the same band. That's How true. weird is that? That's yeah, true. Kevin definitely stepped up to the plate and, and nailed it. Okay, well, right out of the shoot, let's just talk about the, the title of the song and, you know, basically let's go into some depth on what it means. Jesus quoted this in The Temptation of Christ as we know it when Satan brought him out into the wilderness and he began tempting him with so many different things, you know, world domination and this and that. But Jesus reiterated this, and he's quoting the Old Testament scripture, which he wrote anyway, that man does not live by bread alone, but on the word of God. And the world is living on everything except the bread of the word of God. You know, they're all concerned about this, they're concerned about that. And, and Jesus says, no, my food is to do the will of the Father. It's a great song because it's challenging the listener. The, the world is trying to satisfy itself, it says, you know, and that the most important thing on the planet is you and, and nobody else. And, and, and we're just going, no, that, that's not true. Les even talks about, you know, as an older believer, looking back, that it's the Word of God. We don't live by just bread alone. We don't live by just the daily things, but by everything that God has said in His Word. That's what feeds our souls. That's what makes the difference. And that's what the song's about. You know, an interesting thing about the title, Bread Alone, and we don't live by bread alone, the very nature of how that's phrased and how Jesus phrased that, if you think about it, he's also saying that the bread is not unimportant. Right. Yeah, we need to, <laughs> we think, have to draw bread. I think breath. there's a lot yeah. of people that, that, you know, take it and, well, Jesus said it and I'm going to go overboard the other way. Yeah. So those things are just not important. In a way, he's saying that, no, those things are important. But that's not everything. Yeah. And that's not the main thing here and, and refocuses our attention. Yes. Which is great. Because, you know, Satan was tempting him with earthly things. And Jesus said, that's not what's going to satisfy me. What satisfies me is the word of God. And that's the only thing that truly satisfies. Because, you know, like you know, we're talking to the woman at the well. You can go ahead. You're going to come back here every day and draw this water. But the water I give you, you will never thirst again. And, of course, he wasn't talking about the physical water coming in. He's talking about him, his spirit. And serving him in spirit and in truth. And it's the same concept here. That's what feeds our souls. That's what feeds us. And and we can get so busy talking about the bread of the world, getting caught up in the cares and concerns of the world, as Jesus talked in the parable of the you know, of the soil, we can nullify our Christian walk. Our you know, our fruit will be nothing because the cares and the and the concerns of the world choke out those things. That's what the world teaches us to run after these things. And God says, No, I will give you those things. You know, I'm going to give you, I know when a sparrow falls to the ground, you know, I know when the stuff's happened, I'm going to feed you. You're my children. You're much more important than a sparrow or anything else. And so focus on me, you know, seek first the kingdom of God and all these other things are, will be added to you. And that's where I pray. We're still in the world, but we're not of the world. 
And it's that same principle just being reiterated to us to focus on that and not spend all of our time and our energy and our thoughts and our prayers even about stuff. Because God's going to provide this stuff. He's going to give us our needs. Not our wants necessarily, but the things that we need. And we need to be satisfied in that. And then we'll really discover even how much deeper this goes. Right? Living on bread. Not bread alone, but on the word of God. Every word of God. From Genesis to Revelation. Some of the lyrics on this one. Uh, some of my favorite lyrics on Dangerously Close. And I tell you what, I gotta tell you. Uh, from all the Blood Good albums, and I obviously I have them all. Listen, <laughs> thank you for and that. And studied them, <laughs> and lyrically, um, just some of the greatest lines <laughs> and phrases uh, on it. And I just love that everything you own and all that you consume will not be able to keep you from the tomb. Such a great line. And what a culture that we do live in yeah. today, more than any other time in history, and really the country that we live in, more yeah. than any other country possibly on the planet, of just being consumers. Is being a consumer bad? No. But life is more than that. Yes. That consumer mentality is really, you know, reached deep into the church as well. People come and visit my church and basically get the, well, this wasn't a good fit because, you know, you don't do this and you don't do that. You can't meet this need. You can't meet that need. I go, what is this, a pair of Nikes? We're supposed to be coming into the church to, st where can I serve? Gee, this, this church needs my gifts. Hmm. And I'm not even talking about financial gifts, but, you know, I have a real gift for running sound or I have, you know, I, I love ushering or whatever. And so, so that consumer mentality, it, again, consumerism is meism. It's hedonism and sound bites and stuff. And it really has affected the church in, in a very negative way. Yeah, we have to be really on guard on that. I mean, we really, really do. Because so much of what we do is based on our upbringing and, and all that. But we have to say, hold it, how does this line up with the Word of God? I don't care, you know, if you're where you're brought up or what you were taught, you know, does it line up with the Word of God? And if it doesn't, you have to challenge yourself and say, okay, what does God, what does God want me to do? You know, how does this all work? And I, do, I love that line as well. It's a classic lessism. <laughs> Maybe that's Carlsonism. I don't know. Carlsonism. <laughs> Again, the album is dangerously close. And remember, we do not live by bread alone. Everything you own and all that you consume 
Thank you for listening to Stand in the Light. Visit us online at bloodgoodband.com, like us on Facebook, or Twitter us. Stand in the Light is brought to you by West Coast Sound and Light and Be Good Records. Blood Good is Michael Bloodgood, Les Carlson, Paul Jackson, Oz Fox, Kevin Whistler, and occasionally David Safiro. Licensing fees have been paid by ASCAP and BMI. I'm Les Carlson, and don't forget to say your prayers. That lovely sound, it's showing us the way. Yeah, I mean, I really, the only thing fans do is they come and they say, oh, I really like the Blood Good album. Sounds awesome. So that's what I get from fans when I'm out on the road with Striper. <laughs> that's usually what I hear. You know, it's almost like a, they kind of sneak in and kind of, you know, around behind the backs of all the rest of the Striper guys. Hey, the Blood Good album sounds really good. And I'm like, yeah, thanks. <laughs> you know, <laughs> so <laughs> it's cool.